Welcome to The Dealer Speaks. I'm Leslie Allen. Today we're in Charlottesville, Virginia, home of Carter Myers Automotive. You know, Carter Myers has been serving Central Virginia for almost a century, and it continues to thrive and grow under fourth generation dealer, Liza Borchus. We started in Petersburg, Virginia as a Ford dealership in 1924. Uh, my dad, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were all Harrison Carter Myers, and so I'm, I'm the first woman to uh, join the ranks of our company to run the business. And while Borchus does appreciate the 93-year legacy resting on her shoulders, she's busy preparing Carter Myers for the next generation, and that means growth. Carter Myers Automotive is proud to announce that Colonial Kia is joining the CMA family. In CMA has averaged one store purchase or open point acquisition a year for the past seven years. Back in my dad, or especially my grandfather's generation, um, a lot of people had the American dream of owning their one dealership. And in today's world, I don't think that that's... Um, necessarily a realistic dream because a single point dealership is very difficult to run these days. Um, being a part of a group and growing your business is almost vital to having a future beyond hopefully this generation. So I do think that there's pressure to continue to grow um, and I, I would say the other big reason that we as Carter Myers Automotive want to continue to grow is we want to make sure we're bringing in the best talent possible mm -hmm. and that means having career paths and growth opportunities for our future managers. CMA has 13 dealerships, 15 franchises. It's based here at the Colonial Auto Center, which has Nissan, Lincoln, Buick, and GMC stores. A Volvo dealership is nearby. Carter Meyer's other stores are in Richmond and Stanton, Virginia. Borges is focusing her growth efforts within a two-hour drive of Charlottesville. Congratulations on your purchase. And thank you for choosing Heritage Chevrolet. If they need to sit and brainstorm on a personnel issue or a customer issue, I can be there to any of them within about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so right now, and I'm not saying this might not change for the future, we're really looking in Central Virginia, maybe the state of Virginia as our growth area. She says you must have financial and human capital in place to make a successful acquisition. It's a lesson she learned from her dad, H. Carter Myers III. He expanded into Farmville in Fredericksburg, Virginia in the 1990s, but ended up selling those operations and pairing back to just three stores. He grew very fast and he didn't have the people in place ready to take on the duties as they bought new stores. So when you asked me what are the two most important things that we look at in acquisitions, and that's one, making sure that we have the financial capacity, and two, we have the people that are ready. So um, he preached that, he preached that, he preached that. We actually had a saying in our, in our company, or excuse me, in our family back in the 90s when he was going through a little bit of troubled times. He'd come home every night and we'd say, Dad, how many cars did you all sell today? He said, six cars a day keeps the banker away. And so it was a little bit of a scary time for our company, but I know any 93-year-old company has gone through those bumps in the roads and we just want to learn from them and make sure we don't make those mistakes again. Myers handed the reins to his daughter starting in 2011. She became president and a couple of years later, CEO. But Myers, a prominent dealer who once chaired NADA, remains active as executive chairman and more importantly, as a guide for his daughter. I feel like I am the most fortunate fourth generation dealer or, or probably even second or third generation dealer out there. I think it's very difficult at any point in your life to let go when, you, when this business has been your life forever. And that's what it was for my dad. He, was, he worked his tail off for his entire career, and I shouldn't say entire career because it's not over yet. He is, he is executive chairman of our company. Um, he's available anytime I need him, but he has really stepped back and allowed me to make decisions to make good ones and bad ones. Sometimes you have to fail or, or make a mistake to learn from it. Um, I think a lot of people in our company were surprised that he was willing to step back as far as he did. It wasn't a given. After graduating from the University of Virginia in 1997, Borchus joined a trainee program at American Honda in California. She stayed at Honda nearly seven years, then decided to move closer to home. That was around 2003. And he tells me, you know, today that um, I guess he was 63 when I decided to come back to the company, or early 60s. And um, if I hadn't decided that in, in within a couple years, he would have started to think about an exit strategy. 
So he also, I think, didn't want to grow. Once he brought it back down to three dealerships and felt he had everything under control, if he didn't have a plan to have another family member or, or somebody to succeed him, he didn't necessarily want to keep growing the company. So as soon as I let him know, we started growing pretty fast again. She joined just in time to help negotiate the purchase of the Volvo store. Thankfully, it was a really small dealership, so it allowed me to get my arms around every single position from driving the shuttle to writing service to jumping into parts to selling cars and being the general manager all at the same time. And she got an important lesson early on. And, and he says, and I agree with him, that it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me was the 2008 recession. It was still fairly early in my career, and I think for folks who've only been in this business during good times, um, decisions that we had to make in 2008, I think, are helping us even be smart today. Uh, we look at our personnel expense per vehicle sold, our marketing expense per vehicle sold every single month, because it's easy to kind of let the fat creep back in when times are good. And times have been good in the last eight or nine years. But with industry sales starting to flatten, she's being proactive about cost. That includes controlling marketing and inventory expenses. There's a lot of pressure from the manufacturers to take every vehicle they want to send us. Um, but with interest rates inching up, um, we've got to really keep an eye on our inventory. Borsha says it's important for dealers to have a voice with the automaker and to understand that the factory has to be profitable too. But she says factory incentive programs can be overly complicated and can make it hard to make long-term decisions. There are some manufacturers where I would say up to 75% of a dealer's profits are tied to earning this extra manufacturer money. It's very scary when that money that high percentage of your profits is tied to programs you don't control. Shared ownership gives us shared success. And speaking of control, Carter Myers is big on giving employees a stake in their company. It's had an employee stock ownership plan since 1979. Plus, most general managers, such as Scott Simons, who runs five stores in Stanton, are partners who can own up to 20% of their stores. Ever since I got out of college, you know, 20 years ago, I wanted to be a car dealer. This arrangement enabled me to do that. Meantime, 40 minutes away, Borges has a new task, helping her community to heal. We begin with breaking news from Charlottesville, Virginia. Where Weeks before our visit, Charlottesville was in the spotlight after white nationalists held a rally here that turned deadly. And I'm currently the uh, board chair of our local United Way. And so I'm helping uh, work with an advisory group of our whole community to put together a, a community-wide event. We're calling it a community table, where we are trying to bring all affected groups um, together and, and try to figure out how to heal our town. How do we listen better to each other? How do we recognize that, yes, we've had some barriers that need to be broken down in our community? It was an awful um, set of events that happened the weekend of August 12th. And although there were a lot of outsiders that came here, um, there's some things in our own community that we need to, to help address and to heal. Well, that's it for this edition of The Dealer Speaks. Thanks for watching. Take care.